Within a prisoner of war camp in Japan, Colonel Lawrence attempts to find peace between the Japanese soldiers and his fellow British POWs, especially one Jack Selliers, a rebellious natured POW played by David Bowie. This is Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Despite the film's title of a festive implication, this is not a Christmas film. The film portrays a fascinating relationship between forces of authority and victims of such authority. Lawrence has a reputation with the Japanese soldiers in the POW camp. He is the man who can bridge the divide between the Japanese and the British within the camp. Being competent in his Japanese enough to communicate the demands and concerns of the British to the Japanese. This allows Lawrence to be seen as an esteemed member of the camp. Even though he is still a prisoner, he is able to deliver clear and rational messages to the authority. He has a particular good rapport with Sergeant Tara, played by Takeshi Kitano. However, Lawrence is not immune to brutality. When Jack Sellius is introduced into the POW camp, in a weakened state. Lawrence goes to his aid, but is greeted by a Japanese soldier's beating, a reminder that Lawrence is still a prisoner first and foremost. Despite this violence towards the prisoners, there are scenes which depict more warmth. From an intimate scene where Lawrence and Hara at night watch over Jack, Jack waking momentarily to say Hara has a funny face but beautiful eyes, to a scene where a drunken Sergeant Hara, on Christmas Day in good spirits, says to Lawrence and Jack, after they have been released, released from isolated holding, believed to be the culprits guilty of smuggling a radio into the camp, that he is Father Christmas, that he is Santa Claus bestowing a gift of release. Hara and Lawrence, despite hostilities at times, have a warmth unexpected of the setting of a POW camp. This rapport is preserved by the end of the film when Hara is a prisoner and Lawrence is the authority. The tables have turned, yet Lawrence still offers the same level of respect to his friend, stating he would let Hara go home back to his family family if he could, but he is unable to do so. Lawrence quite profoundly states that Hara is a victim of men who think themselves right, similar to how Hara fought himself right back in the POW camp. After Lawrence's claim that neither side is truly right, as he leaves the cell, Hara salutes Lawrence and wishes him a Merry Christmas. Although they may never meet again, the two have preserved their sense of respect and a warm fondness for each other, a bond, a friendship which transcends conflict. Jack's sense of rebellion is apparent through much of the film, as he appreciates how effortlessly he can antagonise his captors, especially Captain Yonoi. Tension underlies all of their scenes, but not necessarily necessarily the tension of true enemies. On Christmas Day within the camp as a gesture of rebellion, Jack kisses Yunoi which results in a punishment of being buried to his head until he dies. As a dead Jack remains in the ground, Yunoi salutes him. An earlier scene between Yunoi and Jack portrays the two ready to fight. Although Jack is clearly physically exhausted, Yunoi claims that if Jack kills him then and there, Jack will go free. But this doesn't motivate Jack to fight, but the complete opposite. There's seems to be a mutual respect here too. Although it is less endearing as Lawrence's and Tara's friendship, Yunoi and Jack seem to find a respect for each other through being a perfect match. Yunoi has not been tested in the way that Jack tests him. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch to suggest an underlying homoeroticism is between these two characters. In conclusion, Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence is a brilliant exploration of the relationship between authority and prisoner, portraying the intimate, warm and playful joy and successes of such a bond to the antagonistic rebellious testing frustration that is inevitable within such a setting. The centre of the film is incredibly human as the spectrum of emotion is documented, transcending the limits of the prisoner of war camp.